So while I get my fire going to cook some food, I wanted to talk a little bit about titanium, titanium cookware. Now over the years, I have had a lot of different titanium pots, pans, cups, mugs from different companies. You are gonna pay more for titanium, of course, because it is lightweight. So when you're hiking in for the day, going for a multi-day hike, or especially when you're backpacking, you wanna look for something that's super lightweight that's not gonna add a whole lot of extra pounds to your pack. Titanium is very eco-friendly. Of course, it's lightweight. It doesn't rust. It can withstand very high temperatures and it heats up and cools down very quickly. As you've seen in previous videos with my titanium stoves, for example, you dump out the ash and within about a minute, you can pick it up. Same goes for titanium cookware. So what we're gonna look at first is this pot and bowl set from Keith. Now generally, different brands will come with different stuff sacks. Generally, they're pretty lightweight, not to add any weight to the set itself. I generally will replace these with like a rip stop, sill nylon, stuff sack. It just holds up a little bit better than this mesh. And especially if you're like me and cook over either a fire or a wood stove, they tend to get you know blackened and you don't want that soot getting all over your uh, inside of your bag. So this is a really nice set. I like the size of it. I like the size of the pot. I use this size pot quite a bit when I'm using stainless. I use a, a zebra pot, for example. And then the bowls are a really nice addition as well. The uh, larger one doubles as a pot lid, so that's nice. And then of course you have your two bowls. You could use it as a mug to drink out of, so very multi-purpose. You can see that they're very heavy duty, very thick walled titanium. Some companies offer titanium that's really thin and flimsy. Not the case with Keith. It's one of the best that I've seen. Probably the most important thing that I look for when selecting titanium is long pot handles. As I mentioned before, I do a lot of cooking either over a fire or over a wood stove and having that extra long handle comes in really handy for getting it on and off a fire. A lot of cookware will just come with very little handles and it's hard unless you're using just maybe like a uh, pocket rocket type stove, a, a, a gas burner type stove where you're really not getting flames coming up the sides and things like that. The shorter handles work okay, but I really prefer the longer handles. If I'm gonna eat out of the bowl or the plate, I also prefer the long handles. Just gives you that extra bit of grip and they fold right down over the side just like the short ones do. So I really like that a lot. So you have this nice big 1200 mil pot. I use this size a lot for cooking vegetables, cooking pastas, and also just boiling water, which we're gonna do today. And then you've got a 400 milliliter uh, bowl and a 300 milliliter bowl. Next up, I have a frying pan. Again, it comes with the mesh stuff sack, which is nice. Again, I'd go ahead and probably just not use it or replace it, but it'll work for a while for you. Anyway, this one comes in a nonstick version and also a regular version. I wanted to try the non-stick out. It has a fold out handle here which comes around the bottom and again nice long handle for cooking over the fire. So we're going to test that out today as well. So finally I have this spork from Keith. Very very nice. It's lightweight. It's small. I always wrap a bit of orange shot cord, brightly col colored cord that I can clip onto my pack so that I don't lose it. And then of course if I drop it I'm gonna be able to see it as well. It does have a bottle opener at the top. And then of course, I do like the spork the best. Serves as a spoon and then also allows you to grab food. So I find myself just carrying something like this. If I need a knife, I generally will have a neck knife, a pocket knife, or even my large knife that I can use for food prep. Again, the long handles work really well. I can set that right on here. And actually, it fits perfectly inside the firebox. You can nest it down in there a little bit further. That's gonna allow that to heat up quicker and then I can just place the, uh, the top on just like that and that's gonna boil very quickly. Another tip is to keep your handles upwind so since the wind is mainly blowing that way I want to keep them on this side so they'll stay nice and cool. That did not take long at all. So next let's test the pan. I'm first gonna do some steaks on here. Now generally I would add some oil. Not gonna add any oil on here. I really wanna see how non-stick that really is. All right, first flip. Let's go ahead and see how non-stick we are. Beautiful. You can see they're just sliding right around in there. Fantastic. All right, these are about done. And the handle is perfectly cold. Very, uh, not even warm, it's cold. I'm gonna wait for this to cool down just a little bit and then we'll do some eggs. 
another real challenge of the non-stick. Non-stick works pretty well. I'm just going to go ahead and add my steaks back in here and breakfast is served. I'm just going to go ahead and eat right out of the pan here. Slamming. Another question I get asked a lot is how do you clean your cookware in the woods? Generally, I'll clean it up good enough to put in my pack and then when I get home, I'll use like an SOS pad. Now, one thing about this non-stick coating here, it is gonna wear off. I use a spork, I don't use plastic utensils. I cut in it, I use it as a plate. So it probably is gonna wear down over time. But generally, just for some field cleaning, I'll grab just some dirt you know, oak leaves, pine needles, anything off the floor usually will work. And I'll just use that as sort of a scrubber. And it soaks up any of the grease that you might have in there. And it also has just that fine enough grit with the sand that you can generally get your pot pretty clean. Another thing that works really well is a little bit of ash from your fire mixed with a little water. It'll have just enough abrasive to clean your stuff out, but you can see that's pretty clean. Now there's soot on the bottom because I use these in a fire or on a wood stove. So I'll just do the same exact thing to the bottom. And again, I'm not looking for it to be perfect. I'm just looking for it to not get a whole bunch of soot in my bag. So generally just something like that is plenty good enough. Moss growing on trees or the ground works really well. You can peel it up. It works just like a washcloth. It'll take that soot off there and it's also really great for washing your hands too. Nature's washcloth. So Keith Titanium is right up there with some of the best that I've ever used. I do like several other brands that I've shown on the channel before from Tokes, from Evernew, Snow Peak, but this stuff is very heavy duty. It's very lightweight as opposed to carrying stainless or even cast iron sometimes. Really that stuff is just for car camping. If you're gonna go lightweight hiking, lightweight backpacking, then titanium is the way to go. So really the only con with titanium cookware is the price, but as with anything else, the lighter, the faster you can go, generally the more expensive it is. Same goes for sleeping bags, tarps, things of that nature. As I mentioned, I really like that they have the long handles. It's hard to find with some of the other cookware that's out there, and for me who uses a, a fire or a wood stove, those long handles really come into play. Titanium is very efficient. It heats up very quickly. It cools down very quickly. That is a great thing to have when it comes to cookware. And of course, it's very strong for its weight. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video today, taking a look at the Keith Titanium Cookware. I'm going to put some links below to GearBest where you guys can pick up the items shown in this video. They also have a whole range of Keith Titanium. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. Please give it a big thumbs up for me. Make sure you leave me some comments below. Please share this video to your friends and family on your social media. And as always, click that red subscribe button. Subscribe to my channel for more videos.